What's on your mind the majority of the time? Like daily? Yeah. This. Like running, you know, putting this to, this business together. So why do you only have one client if you're thinking about it all the time? I don't know. Because I'm not putting in action. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're self-sabotaging yourself in a mm -hmm. way. So where does that come from? Let's see. I don't know. I think, I think it would probably come from the money deal. Like you're not worthy of money. And I don't know where the worthiness would come from though. Can you remember well, back to a time in your childhood? Like, so you remember your parents saying that, but do you also remember something where you, the money, you didn't have enough money and the worthiness came together? I think too, like I just realized this, like just a few days ago and it's coming up again, is that I'm like, maybe I'm afraid to get money because my mom used to always want money from me when I, if I did get it. So I was like, maybe that's why I'm doing that. Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't, I never ever thought about her though, you know, doing that. What, why would your mom want money from you? Because she did drugs and she, like, if she knew you had money, she'd want to borrow money or she'd need money. Oh my gosh. That is crazy that yeah. you're saying that because you know, my dad's a drug addict yeah. too. Yeah. So I totally get exactly what you're like. That just gave me chills. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking I did the same thing. Yeah. The more money I make, the more, the more people are going to use me. That yeah. was my story. And I had to like uncover that. Yeah. So that look, I'm seeing your eyes. You're like, oh my gosh, that's yeah. probably a deep rooted subconscious belief that you have Yeah. where you just have to like, what's going to happen when you have more money mm -hmm. and really like work through that because it sucks. You know, yeah. you start to go, Oh, well, I just don't want to tell people about the money I'm making. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. And then, so I'll just like stay here in this small bubble, but you don't even realize you're doing it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just a couple months ago, my dad calls, can I have $13,000? No. Yeah. See, so that's I, the other thing too, is like, I don't speak to my mom. I mean, I'm I don't cordial with her, either. but you know, I don't speak to her. And so then I'm like, if I put this on Facebook, she's going to be like, oh, she's, you know, she's going to try mm -hmm. to reach out, you know? And you don't want to have that conversation. Yeah. Thing, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but and she's stolen money and everything, you know? So mm -hmm. it's been that whole deal, but that just came out like a few days ago when I was like meditating and journaling and I was up. like, where'd that come from? You know, mm -hmm. like, cause it's just part of the work. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably, you probably have the same story that I had. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy how you get drawn to people. I know. I know. That have those same stories and I've just like overcome that mm -hmm. one. Um, but it can really hold you back for a long time. So yeah. I'm so glad that you uncovered that. Cause yeah. now that you know that you're just going to tell yourself a different story. Yeah. You know, and also face it head on. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like if your mom does call you, you know, she finds out you're a millionaire. Mm -hmm. What does that look like when she calls you and asks you for money? Mm -hmm. Let's walk through that. Hey, Gloria, I heard you have some money and I, I'm in a real bind here. I'm in a real bind. Yeah. These people are mad at me and I need just a thousand bucks. Yeah. Could you help me out? No. Well, why not? Why not? Why not? Please, I'm in a real bind. Yeah, no. Okay. No, I, I wouldn't have a problem saying I no. hate you. Yeah. I hate you. Because we know that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. So that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. She finds out you have more money. Uh-huh. You say no. Yeah. You stand your ground, just like you just did. And yeah. So sometimes facing our fears yeah. head on. We realize, okay, what are we hallucinating about? Mm -hmm. Why am I sabotaging myself? Because even when I have more money, I'm still going to say no to her. Right. And nothing bad's going to come of it. What can she do to you? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. No, and I would, I definitely would not have a problem with that. And how do you feel about yourself saying no to her? Fine. Totally fine. Is it ice queen fine? No, it's, it's legit like fine. I think for me, it was like the chatter and the stories you know, so, but I would totally be okay saying that. Of course, it would be a mental What mind chatter that, and stories? The chatter and stories of like the talk uh, that she would probably talk about me, but it wouldn't be. That the drug addict would be saying about yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. The successful person. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it would mostly be that. It so would you, be the chatter of that and the stories, but it would not, absolutely not be telling her no. So it's more about you caring about yeah. what other people think about you. Yeah, just her talking, yeah. Because what happens when people 
hear that you said no to your mom? Well, they, they don't know the story. And so they, you know, they think I'm a horrible person. So why does it matter when they think that they think you're a horrible person? Um, it does. It shouldn't. I don't know why it does. It wouldn't. I mean, I, I don't know them and she doesn't live around. So it would, I know it would chatter would come up a little bit in my mind, but do you I, have this like need to be perfect where you want everybody to look at you as this? Like, I definitely awesome have like, there's this perfectionism for sure. I definitely have. Cause you want to be nothing like her. Absolutely not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's run through that. There's mm -hmm. all these drug addicts mm -hmm. that think you're a horrible person. Because mm -hmm. that's the only people that are talking to her anyway. Right. So what does that do for you? Does that affect your life? No. And what if good people also think you're a bad person because of what your mom said? Mm -hmm. What does that do for your life? Nothing. Like, I know that I'm going to get that no matter what. Mm -hmm. No matter who it comes from, you know? So... It's not going to matter. So sometimes like instead of trying to like not accept that version of you that wants to be perfect, sometimes it's better to embrace that person yeah. that wants to be seen as perfect mm -hmm. because there's a little girl in there mm -hmm. that is, you know, seeing her mom on drugs going, mm -hmm. Hey, I never will be like that person. Yeah. I will never be her. I'm going to be so much better. Than yeah. Her. Yeah. So that's still who she is. And she was just a little girl that wanted to be loved. Mm-hmm had this mom who was a hot mess. Right. And you didn't deserve that. Yeah. So I know it's definitely work, you know, and it's just a, it's just like a muscle, you know, that you have to keep using and like, it will get stronger, you know? Mm hmm So. You remind me a lot of me. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're just like smiling through it right now. Yeah. Like it doesn't make you sad about your mom. Well, I think I've had a long time to grieve for her because yeah. it's been like so long. And then like I have a 12 year old that she's not seen. So, and I, I take care of her father. He lives with me. She doesn't talk to him, you know? So I think I've had a long time already. And like, is it like she's dead to you? Kind of. And I already know her games and what she does and the whole deal. And, and it, for me, it was when I had kids. I was like, you are not going to be one foot in and one foot out. And I absolutely will not, you know, have you around my kids. So mm -hmm. totally cut it out. And so, you know, my oldest, like I said, is 12. So it's been a long time of processing this, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. What's a memory that you can think of right now mm -hmm. of your mom and you when you were younger like a painful moment when I was younger was she on drugs your whole life yeah she was I think the hardest part for me came when she was like when I when I was pregnant and she stole money from me and she was staying with me because she wanted to be there for the birth of my son so I think that was probably one of the hardest parts you know like because I Emotionally, I kind of dealt with that already, like her being on drugs and stuff. But like when she was, you know, supposed to be there for my pregnancy and the birth and stuff, you know, and then just was like stealing money from me, that was like, oh my gosh, you know? How long ago was that? So that was when I was pregnant with my first. And I, so it was 12 years ago. And, and I what literally did you do had to she like. stole the money? I went downstairs, I approached her, it was like midnight, and I had this, you know, our intuition is crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, I totally get it. Yeah, and so I had this intuition, like, mm -hmm. I think she's gotten into my money, because I had cash, you know? Because you're doing hair. Yeah, and, and I was like, I thought I was strategic about where I put it, you know? Not and, crazy that you even had to think about hiding it from your own mom? Yeah, and so I was like, total like bing you know woke up and then I like went and I was like oh my gosh she totally did so I woke my husband up and I told him and then I just went downstairs and I confronted her and I told her she had to go home so we sent her on a flight back home that night mm -hmm. and you haven't seen her since nope she's contacted some though you know and so like I said I'm cordial with her but we don't have a relationship what did you feel like? What did you feel when you found out? Like hurt, for sure. What was the story that you started making up then? 
I kind of just felt like there was n like no hope for her coming back, you know, like. What did that make you feel about you though? About me? Because here she is, she's supposed to be, you know, like focusing on you for once in your life. Yeah, like she just didn't care. She honestly did not care. I also know that um, when you're on drugs, you, there, nobody else matters. Oh, like yeah. absolutely nobody or anything. They but you can rationalize all you want. Like, yeah. oh, she has a disease, she has all these things, but you're still, in your heart of hearts, you're still a little girl at that moment. Yeah. And here she is, like, supposed to be, for once, being selfless. Yeah. And she can't. No. Nope. And that has to do something to you. Yeah. To make you feel like, I'm just unworthy of love. Well, yeah, for sure. It felt like she didn't care, you know, mm -hmm. like she could really care less. And so obviously that had to put me into a place of feeling like she like not cared, you know, for, but so yeah, definitely it was painful. So that's probably the moment, one of the moments, but there's probably one when you're very young too, mm -hmm. where you, something like that happened too, where you felt unloved. Mm -hmm. So you started to create that story. Yeah. And especially the money thing there. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. So I think that with all of this, that's where the unworthiness comes from. Mm -hmm. Because you, at the end of the day, there's a, still a small little girl inside of you, even mm -hmm. though you have massive success now, you're doing way more. Like you, you beat the odds yeah. of people in your circumstance that had a mom on drugs. Mm -hmm. And here you are making multiple six figures, mm -hmm. getting to travel, getting mm -hmm. to be in like this amazing life. Yeah. So you've done it, but there's still a little girl inside of you that you're not embracing. Yeah. That feels unworthy and feels unloved. So do you think it's like something that you just like work on like a muscle kind of like you have to kind of keep Well, I think too you can't <clears throat> you can't act like she's not there. And yeah. I think like even the way that you're sitting and the way that you're talking. Yeah. It's like you have this wall up. Uh-huh. Like I'm a new woman. I'm somebody that is loved and I'm going to prove it to everybody out there and I can do whatever I want and I can be just as successful. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's you and you are, yeah. you are doing that. Yeah. But there's this like F you all in front of you. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that though too. Like I yeah. am worthy of doing whatever I want, but there's and... still this little girl inside of you. That's literally like on your shoulder saying, Hey, yeah. What about me? I've seen and kind of like visualized and, and meditated on that kind of stuff. But don't you think it's just kind of like something that you continue to work on yeah. or does it completely go away? No, it's never going to go away. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I think about it like uh, passengers on a bus. There's all these versions of you. Mm -hmm. But when you act like those versions of you aren't there, mm -hmm. that's when you do things that are self-sabotaging, mm -hmm. which is what you're doing, not taking action on this next business mm -hmm. of yours. So yeah. um, if you can visualize yourself on a bus, uh -huh. and how old are you? I'm 41. 41 year old Gloria is driving the bus. Mm -hmm. And then there's all these other versions of Gloria that are sitting on the bus. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Your mom's on the bus too. Yeah. And you better put a freaking seatbelt on that. Girl. Yeah, right. But she's there uh -huh. and you can't get rid of her. Mm -hmm. As much as you want to be like, ah, yeah. powerful woman. But the more that you embrace all of those people that are inside of you. Yeah. And just say, hey, you're along for the ride, mm -hmm. but you're not driving today. 41-year-old mm -hmm. Gloria who has had all of these amazing experiences, mm -hmm. who can you know, confidently say no to her mom and not feel bad about it, who knows how to mentor people and is building a million dollar business right mm -hmm. now, she's driving. Mm -hmm. She's in charge today, but just know that I love every single one of you because you've made me into this person mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah, for It's just sure. embracing them and saying, hey, I know you're there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with you. I'm not judging you. I'm embracing you. I'm mm -hmm. saying you get to be here, mm -hmm. but I'm in charge of all of the action I take today. Yeah. And I think just being like unapologetic about how you are putting yourself out there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you have that little fear yeah. of your mom finding out that you have money, it's like you're you're not going to, oh, I don't want to put it out there that yeah. I'm charging this much or, you know, that I'm working with this many people. Then she's going to know for sure I'm making yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. She's going to come for me. Mm -hmm. So if you face that fear and say, hey, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. She's still going to be told no. She's still not going to be a part of my life. Right. Because she doesn't deserve to be a part of your life. Right. Right.